hello and welcome to this Paragon Debate series. My name is Victoria Hart, the Contributing Editor at Mortgage Solutions. I'd like to introduce our guest today. We have Louisa Sedgwick, Commercial Director for Mortgages at Paragon Banking Group, and Andrew Montleg, Managing Director at Corico Mortgage Brokers. Huge welcome to both Thank of you. you. Thank right, you. to question one. A Paragon report revealed the importance of the private rented sector, which houses 4.8 million people, or a fifth of the population, contributing £45 billion pounds to the wider economy and supporting 390,000 jobs. However, the mood music from the spring budget was sombre as further tax incentives were clawed back from landlords, showing the government's unwillingness or uninterest to support the sector. So, Louisa, can I ask you, what reasons do landlords actually have to be cheerful right now? So I think the first thing to do is just peel back the headlines, because, of course, you know, um, the headlines don't always speak the truth. Um, there is a supply and demand mismatch. So we now have up to 25 potential new tenancies for every single new property that comes onto the market. So massive demand um, for the rental sector. You've already mentioned, you know, a fifth of all properties sit within the PRS. So if we think 20% of all of our home um, dwellers, yeah. if that's how we want to call them, um, sit within the PRS and there's clearly um, a massive demand for that. Um, if we look at yields in particular, so um, landlords are earning yields of an average of five and a half percent, so there's still decent yields to be made from properties. Um, and if we look at the landlords that have larger property for portfolios, their yields are averaging just shy of 7%. So actually, um, you know, it is still a very profitable market. Um, if we look specifically at various different types of properties, um, terrace properties tend to hold the highest yields um, or um, houses of multiple occupation, so people who want to live um, in shared accommodation, again, really high yields. So ultimately, um, irrespective of how you look at it, there is still a good, solid profit to be made um, within properties and particularly within the rental sector. Okay, thanks, Louisa. Monty, from a broker's perspective, what, what are you seeing out there that answers the same question? Uh, it's been really interesting, actually, and, and we always see this, don't we, as soon as there are buy-to-let changes and tax changes. Everyone trumpets the death of the buy-to-let market and the end of the landlord, but we, we've seen that that's not actually the case. There's a very real split now between the amateur landlords or the, the dinner party buy-to-let landlords who, who got involved on a whim or maybe inherited a property, etc. Uh, and those types of landlords do seem to be the ones who maybe are looking at the tax changes, maybe are looking at the rental yields and, uh, and all the other th things that are coming in, so changes to, to laws and thinking, actually, it's not for me anymore, and, and they're the ones who are selling up. But actually, the professional landlords, we've seen much more positive mm. around the environment. And as Louisa rightly says, that there's a massive supply and demand imbalance in the private rental sector as a whole generally. So what we're actually seeing is quite a bit of landlord to landlord sales where the amateur landlords might be selling up, but the professional landlords are taking advantage of maybe softer house prices. And rents are still strong and they're projected to be strong for some time still. Okay, and to a slightly edgier topic, um, business volumes commensurately have, have tumbled by roughly half in buy to let kind of showing the stresses and strains mm -hmm. in the market as well but making the politics around product transfer fees a very live issue at the moment as we're all uh, very aware of um, so so Andrew what's your stance on this because obviously it's been debated many times <clears throat> where, where are we at now in terms of the product transfer fee debate and and what, what are your th uh, what are your thoughts and where are we at? <laughs> We're still very much in the middle of a of a debate, and it does vary from lender to lender. Some lenders are very good, um, and some lenders, in my opinion and, and the opinion of many brokers, pay too little um, when it comes to PT rates. Um, it's it's a very emotive subject, and and for us as a broker, we're working harder than ever, longer hours. Um, the capricious nature of the um, interest rate changes, swap mm. rates changing. Uh, we're in contact with our, our clients uh, at least six months before rates 
uh, before their rate expires. So in some cases, we're revisiting and changing the same application three, four, yeah. even I think seven times is a record we've done. Unrewarded and every, work. And every time feel. we do that, we're not charging any more. It's also very hard to charge a fee um, for a, a product transfer to, to a lot of clients. A little bit different where landlords are concerned mm. um, because we're used to taking that um, holistic approach and, and managing their portfolio all the way through. But the level of work to do a product transfer is the same for most brokers if they're doing their job properly as it is with uh, a first time purchase in the buy to let mm. space. So it's really important and as brokers, we were there to help lenders when uh, when they needed our help with things like the payment holidays. Yeah. Uh, when they got really busy, and 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 now it's a it's a, a time when brokers need lenders' help um, to make sure that brokers are still going to be there because it is hitting brokers mm. firms' pockets quite hard, and we need to ensure that brokers are still there to distribute the products that come from the lenders when the market really does return properly. So I have to ask, what might force this change, do we think? Because obviously one of the lenders leading from the front would be helpful at this point, or I should say another lender leading from the front would be helpful. Nick, what, what, do you, what, do you, what do you see? I think we're starting to see, we have seen some lenders start to change. Um, certainly lenders are now engaging a lot more with brokers. We're having some really good conversations. They're understanding where we're coming from. We understand where lenders come from as well. Sometimes it's not so easy just to say, oh, here's, a, here's some more money. Um, it's about talking and making sure actually we, we are supporting each other. Um, and I think we will be in a very different place in the next six, seven, eight, nine months because I do think that someone will go first and, and benefit from the massive PR and good feeling that such a move would bring. Well, that's really good to hear. And uh, hopefully we'll report it first on all the solutions. So uh, lovely, we'll, we'll be in touch. <laughs> it's, it's a pity it can't be us, but we're already paying a, a good fee commensurate with yeah. the work that's yeah. done. So Well, that, yeah. was my next, that was my next question. We yeah, we, so. we're, we're already in a, in a decent place and um, we increased our PT procuration fees ooh, two years ago. So um, in line with you know our um, originations procura procuration fees. Um, I, I think following on from um, Monty's comment that I do think the next few months will play out, but I think they'll play out for a different reason because I genuinely believe that the remortgage market is likely to come back um, and come back um, you know, we, on a mission um, this year and beyond. Um, so I do actually think that PTs are still going to be a challenge because there's still going to be affordability constraints with some borrowers. Mm. Um, but I do genuinely believe that there'll be more options available for, for customers to look towards remortgaging to a different lender, at which point, obviously, that, that PT um, issue very slightly falls by the wayside. But, but we also see, in, in spite of the fact that there's an awful lot of talk around PTs, and we, you know, we are, we, we, as I say, we pay a healthy PT um, procuration fee, and we really do support the, the borrowers in going back to their originating broker. Um, but without quoting numbers, it's disappointing to see how many customers still come back to us directly who haven't had broker advice. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I understand that that's probably because brokers are potentially chasing new um, uh, customers and new transactions as opposed to servicing their existing client bank. But that, that I find slightly concerning mm. that such a vast number of these customers are orphaned by their existing mm. brokers. So I think there's a lot more work to, to be done. I think there's a lot more meeting of minds to discuss this and have grown up adult conversations about it. But I also think that the market's likely to change in favour of the brokers enabling them to, to move uh, mortgages around more freely. And I'm afraid we're just going to have to wrap up right there. That's all we've got time for in this segment. But come back and join us for the next segment, which you'll see shortly on Mortgage Solutions. Thank you for joining us.